And we're going to jump right into uh, HB 1041. And a couple comments on that. I have a number of cards for that. And um, uh, I want to thank Christina Dyer. Christina, you're, uh, I did, she's our researcher. And come to find out, uh, a measure similar to this came to the House, to this committee, uh, around 2011 or so. So this is not the first time this has come here. And um, we're going to look at what came before. I've looked at some of the notes Christina put together. Very interesting that this has come up before. Uh, before we get started, I, I want to say a couple things. Uh, we're going to do this a little bit differently. Uh, Representative Gerhard is the prime sponsor. Uh, he's asked if he could go last uh, to briefly tie, tie up any loose ends in terms of testimony. So the co-sponsor, Representative Granger, is going to introduce the measure. Uh, before I throw it to Representative Granger, um, I want to acknowledge, it's very important to me, and I've already spoken to some of these gentlemen, there, this, this measure is about the uh, incident that happened in 1967. Uh, I was around then, I was a kid, but I remember it, this, this incident happening, this incident, if, if that's the right word. Uh, and there are at least three gentlemen uh, who have already spoken to earlier who have traveled great distances to be here to talk about uh, this. The, the intent of the bill, the, the, uh, the two representatives will, will do that. Um, I want to point out that there will be a news conference or a press conference, a news conference uh, scheduled for 1130 down in the LOB, the uh, Legislative Office Building Lobby. Um, and, I, and I appreciate the the sponsors uh, taking my counsel to set this up downstairs. We have a finite amount of time in here, and it's very important that these gentlemen who travel a great distance have a chance to uh, say some things that they feel need to be said and also to take some questions. So we'll do a little of that in here, but we, we are constrained by time. So I want to point out that uh, news conference downstairs at 1130, so all that said, we will get to the uh, sponsor and then um, to uh, some of the, the gentlemen who are part of this, uh, this American history. Uh, Representative Granger, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. This bill is to establish a commission to investigate the USS Liberty incident. There are many important reasons to form this commission, but rather than have me speak to that, we have firsthand witnesses here uh, who can fill you in. I, I do want to point out that this bill was submitted in September, and therefore it was not instigated by the recent occurrences in October. So this isn't uh, a bill to draw any special attention to the uh, issue of Israel at all, and it's not, it's not political in that sense. It was submitted before the recent, uh, uh, re recent crises have sparked over there. Um, in the interest of time, I have provided my card to the clerk, so you can, if you have any questions about the bill specifically, you can uh, email me. Uh, that way, I don't have to take any questions. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Representative. OK, I want to jump right into one of the survivors who's traveled here from um, Baltimore. We're going to ask the folks who follow the survivors to try to uh, limit your testimony uh, succinctly, well-organized, don't repeat previous information. But I want to give the, uh, the survivors who are here uh, a little bit more time, up, up to five minutes if, uh, if they need that, uh, to speak to us about uh, this bill. And again, as the representative ex explained, this is a bill to establish a commission to investigate this 1967 uh, naval battle in the Mediterranean. Uh, so uh, uh, Larry, Larry Bowen, who I spoke with earlier, I believe from Baltimore. Larry, welcome, uh, and we're very interested to hear what you have to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Larry Bowen. Uh, back on June 8, 1967, I was an E5 communications technician radioman, and uh, I'm here today to support uh, H HB 1041. Can you speak into the mic, please? Pardon me? I'd, I'd like to be, you know, called under oath if possible because I uh, have never had an opportunity to speak before a committee to, uh, you know, tell the story that, uh, that 
the American public needs to hear. Yes, Larry. The notion of uh, swearing you in under, under oath has come up, and I've contacted and spoke with some parliamentarian types, and we're, we are not going to uh, do the oath taking. And I think as a military person, uh, my, my feeling is that you don't need to swear an oath. We, we believe what you're going to say without an oath. So okay. there, there you have it. Okay, thank you. Well, in the previous bill, I heard a lot about the Constitution and what, uh, what the Constitution and our government is, is not, not following. Um, part of the reason that we're here today is to support this bill that uh, our government failed in supporting the Constitution back when we were attacked on June 8, 1967. Um, the government failed to come to our rescue the government put a gag order on us to, um, you know, not speak about the the incident, um, and threatened us with imprisonment and fines, and the, uh, the government failed to do a fur thorough investigation of the uh, the attack. Um, the Navy conducted a Navy court of inquiry, and. During that court of inquiry, they took testimony from several of our shipmates, um, but then they were given guidance to modify the testimony that they received um, so that it would comply with the mistaken identity uh, claim that, that Israel had said when they apologized. Um, so, we were uh, we were not all called for our testimony. All of us, uh, the other two gentlemen here with me today, uh, were in different parts of the ship, so we've got a little different perspective on on what happened and and why this bill is so important to us. We've we've waited fifty six and a half years for something like this, giving us an opportunity to speak before a government organization that may in fact follow through because of your, you know, live free or die uh, statement. That's, uh, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the truth to get out about the incident with the USS Liberty and the aftermath, um, the investigations that weren't done even though they were, you know, a constitutional requirement, we submitted a uh, war crimes report back in 2005 that was designed to to have our government do a formal investigation uh, through the Department of Defense, and they replied that there had already been an investigation conducted, and that they they weren't going to do another one. Uh, there's been no congressional investigation into the liberty. This is the first opportunity for a state to actually come forth and say that, you know, they're willing to set up a commission to look into this and, uh, you know, report back on, on the findings. There are a lot of unanswered questions that uh, were submitted through uh, the remote testimony process. Um, and I won't go into those, but I will say that uh, we're thrilled that the state of New Hampshire is uh, is willing to take this up on the agenda and uh, possibly give us a chance to, uh, you know, express our concerns and, uh, you know, get some truth out to the American public. Thank you, Larry. And thank you for your service. I, I want to point out that uh, you folks have traveled great distances. There's also a New Hampshire connection. There's a, a Commander David Edward, Edwin Lewis from Colebrook, North mm -hmm. Country, where I'm from, uh, was on that ship. He might have been the, the uh, uh, he was an intel officer, I think, on He on was the our uh, officer in charge of the Naval Security Group activity that was also being supported by the National Security Agency. And, and, uh, and he... 
passed away in 2021 at the age of 90. So there, there is that New Hampshire connection. And I believe his niece is here and is going to talk to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, we certainly look forward to that. And okay, that would be her. Yep. Um, it, we we do need to roll, and I know that you have a news conference coming up that we don't want to have you miss because then you'll have full opportunity. But I, I have one quick question uh, that has to do with the end state. So the purpose of this measure is to establish a commission. So if, a, if the commission were to be established, uh, let me ask you, uh, what if, if you could briefly t tell us one thing that you'd like to see come out of this commission were it to happen? Um, probably for me, I'd like to see the truth come out so that we can, we can actually, you know, tell the rest of the American public exactly what happened. There's still documentation that the NSA and the CIA are holding as classified information that, uh, that they haven't released yet. There's, uh, still documentation that, uh, has come out since the June 8th, 1967, uh, that's been published in various books, but um, it's never all come together to kind of refute, refute the, uh, the claim that this was a mistaken identity attack and, and was in fact a deliberate attack. So um, yeah, I'd like to see the uh, results of the committee to, to verify what uh, what the actual cause of the attack was, and uh, what what we should have done that uh, our Congress didn't do. Th thank you for that. Questions? Any other questions? Uh, yes, uh, Representative Levitt. Thank you, Chair Moffitt. You know, I appreciate your testimony. It's Larry, right? Yes. The question I have is. Where did the government fail? I mean, your testimony is rather vague. I mean, in what unanswered questions um, need to be explained? I mean, you're up here testimony. I think the committee deserves an in-depth explanation as to why you feel that the government failed. And according to my memorandum here, it says uh, the official report states that the attack was accidental. I mean, I think in order for us to make a informative decision, we would probably need a little better explanation as to why you don't believe that. Okay, as a crew member, uh, we had been overflown that day uh, probably a half a dozen times by Israeli aircraft doing reconnaissance on our ship. And at the time, we felt safe because the... Uh, the planes were clearly marked, and uh, we thought that, you know, they had our back because we were out there as an independent ship. The, uh, I guess, when the attack occurred, they were using unmarked aircraft, so we had no idea what, uh, what country was actually doing the, you know, the attacking. We, uh, we didn't find that out until the torpedo boats came up after the strafing runs and the napalm drops. Uh, the torpedo boats came in and they were carrying the uh, Star David flags on their, on their little torpedo boats. So the, uh, where, where our government failed is that they t didn't take into consideration anything about the culpability of, uh, of the attackers or who was, you know, there was no discussion with uh, the uh, Israeli Defense Force personnel who were participating in this. Um, it came out after the attack that there was actually intercept, voice intercept from the aircraft uh, pilots and their ground controllers that they did identify it as a U.S. you know ship with uh, the American flag flying, but that was taken out of the testimony. So, so when the court of inquiry was done, the uh, some of the things that were, you know, 
I guess some of the things that happened to the ship were uh, were not allowed to be testified about. Uh, we had Lieutenant. Follow up, follow up, Chair Martin. Follow up. It's astonishing to me that this wasn't discredited by our government because what you're saying is going to open up a whole new investigation because of a testimony that, and forgive me if I'm wrong, that was not investigated. Because if, if what you're saying it wasn't, I mean, you know, that could have, you know, long-term implications as far as where this uh, committee not only goes or votes, but, it, you know, in, in some of the uh, decisions, uh, you know, the government may have to make. Right. Well, I understand. And it's, uh, those are the kinds of questions that came up with, with us as a organization trying to get Congress to, uh, to do a full and comprehensive investigation. Um, this bill, if the committee, you know, so chooses, um, establishes a commission to do the, the work of the federal government, um, to determine not only culpability, but, um, answer questions about why we were, you know, put under a gag order to never talk about the, the incident. Uh, I mean, it was... It was historical in the sense of thank you larry and you just mentioned historical and i think one of the and i think representative levitt's question is very fair uh gets right to the heart of what we need to talk about and i think your answer is very good uh we need to press on uh you mentioned historical and i think one thing that will come out of this uh this is on youtube uh, a lot of awareness has been raised and is being raised and will be raised about this history from 1967. A lot of people did not know about, and they will know about it now. I don't know where this will go. Uh, we're still taking, obviously, testimony. Um, are there any other questions for Larry at this time? Uh, Ms. Bowen, thank you for, your, for traveling here and, um, and for your testimony and for your service. Thank and, you, and thank you for allowing me to testify. And we'll press on to someone else who was there in 1967 uh, and has come here all the way from Missouri, um, Bryce Lockwood, Gunny, Gunnery Sergeant, Ura Semper Fi. Gunny, Good thanks for me, being Mr. here. Chairman. My name is Bryce Lockwood. I'm a retired Gunnery Sergeant, United States Marine Corps retired Baptist minister ordained. I have some pictures here I would like to provide to the members of the committee, show the ship that was taken from the aircraft of the USS America on the next morning. There are also some pictures that were taken of me the next morning. I faced a torpedo explosion from less than 10 feet away looking at it. The question came up about the identity of the ship. Every protocol and in international law that was designed to prevent such an accident was violated by the Israelis in this attack. They were using unmarked aircraft. They were jamming our distress frequencies. They machine gunned our life rafts. Ironically, the machine gunning of the life rafts, international law came about as a result of Nazi submarines, machine gunning refugee ships, many of which contain individuals who later became Israeli citizens. The question came up that we were not in a combat zone. The Israelis never broadcasted an area closure. Therefore, we were not in a combat zone. We were in international waters 13 and a half miles off the Sinai Peninsula. There was no investigation by the U.S. Congress into the attack on our ship, which is required by Article 1, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution to investigate acts of piracy on the high seas. Congress has never done so. The Liberty Veterans Association has a letter from the U.S. Congress that that is in the congressional record. Some years ago, the USS Cole was attacked off Yemen. 17 Americans were killed. The American government, U.S. Congress, investigated that accident for nine months. Twice as many were killed in attack on the USS Liberty. That investigation was concluded in five days. Our organization filed 
formal war crimes charges in 2005. The Secretary of the Army is required by law to investigate all war crimes charges. It has never been investigated. Law firm of Ron Gotcher provided free gratis information by pre preparing that war crimes charge and the U.S. Uh, Secretary of the Army has never done anything about it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are so appreciative of you folks taking time to listen to us, and we are grateful. Thank you. Gunny, thank you for your service. And yes, uh, a lot of attention is being paid to this and, and will be paid to this. Questions? Uh, Representative Rollins. Yes, I'd just like to say thank you for the photographs that you you provided us right to you. Thank you. And thank you for your service from all of us. My privilege. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Gunny. Okay, also here who has traveled a good distance is Philip Torney. Uh, he's representing the U.S. Liberty. He's the current president, and he can explain uh, his position there. Thank you for traveling here to support the sponsor's uh, measure. Welcome. Uh, obviously, support the bill. And, and um, uh, if you could just confirm the spelling of your last name here for our clerk, and then off you go. Yes, sir. Uh, spelling of my last name is T O U R N E Y. Okay, that's right. First thought. name Philip. I'm from Cedar Ridge, Colorado, a small town on the western slope of Colorado. Uh, I live on a 40 acre ranch there, and I did travel a great distance to get here. I would have walked here if I had to. We've never, ever had the chance to sit before a committee, and thank you. Uh, Mr. Moffat, Chairman, and, and all distinguished guests here and representatives, thank you for the honor of being here. What, what we're here for is this. The truth has never been told. It's been a lie. Uh, Mr. Levitt, I believe you talked about uh, the investigation was a mistaken identity. That was put into the Naval Board of Inquiry under the direction of LBJ to tell Admiral Isaac Kidd in Ward Boston it was a mistaken identity. That's the farthest thing in the world from what really happened. What you people are do can do for us today is the most important thing you'll probably ever do in your life. We're here to represent the men that didn't get back that day. 34 of them were blown to bits. 25 of them were blown to bits by a torpedo which these two men, he was, he, UT testified to that, 10 feet from the torpedo hole. These guys are security people, the most secret people I've ever met. I'm not a security guy. I wasn't in that part of the ship. I was in damage control. Uh, I saw the airplanes. I saw the attacking planes. I saw the, the helicopters coming over to finish us off. This attack lasted as long as the attack on Pearl Harbor. Aircraft were sent from the USS Saratoga, USS America. They were recalled by LBJ and McNamara to get back to base. Do not help the Liberty. They left us out there to die. Lyndon Baines Johnson and Eskol, he was a prime minister of Israel at the time, concluded, they colluded together to sink our ship. We were set up to be murdered by our own government slaughtered, left out there alone. We didn't see any help for 17 hours when help was only 40 minutes away. Two aircraft carriers, the USS America and USS Saratoga. In fact, the skipper of the Saratoga lost his job because he sent help to us. From the America, they were called back. The The Congress of the United States has never investigated this. They say they have, but they're lying. They've never had an official investigation. This is the first body of people in government that we've had the opportunity to speak before. We gave our blood for this country. We would do it again.
but not in the circumstances of being set up to be murdered. And that's what they wanted. They wanted to bring us into World War III. We were this close to World War III. Believe me. And we can prove it. We've got documents, and I'm not going to repeat every, every, all, every document. We'll get all that to you through Jason or Matt or somebody, whatever you want, you can go through. But please, please just understand we're not here in anger. We're here because we love our country, we love our fellow shipmates, and we love all of you. We're all Americans. If we don't look out for each other, we're done. That's why we're here in the leave for, uh, live free or die state, is because of you people. Nobody else has the courage to do this, to listen to us. Um, I thank my God, my God in heaven that saved that ship. Because we had a 40 by 40 foot torpedo hole in the ship. We put over life, we only had three life rafts left. We put them over to save, to get the most seriously wounded in them. And the, the, the ship was full of people on the deck, bleeding, dying. We put the life rafts over and the Israelis shot them out of the water. They took one aboard their boat as a trophy of the kill. This isn't about, this isn't about hate. This is about the American way. They took away our First Amendment rights. I was told by Admiral Kidd and four others in a separate interview, I told them exactly what I saw and what I thought. He, he took his stars off. He says, now, I'm just like your dad. Just tell me everything. And I did. When I got done, he put his stars back on and says, if you ever breathe a word about what you just told me to anybody, I'll make sure you end up in the penitentiary or worse. We all know what worse meant, death. We just went through hell. We've been going through hell for 56 and a half years for the truth. Our own government did this to us. This body here, don't do that to us. Don't throw us down the road. Don't, don't please don't. We need you. We need, if you do this, the United States government has got to do something then because you, I just can't tell you the importance of what you, what you uh, people are t tasked with, with this liberty investigation. And believe me, it, it, it's the most important thing you'll ever do in your life. Thank you, Mr. Torney. Yes. Uh, I want to remind you and everyone else that your words are being recorded. Uh, this will be, this is on video and uh, you, you will have the opportunity in your comrades to refer people to this video, which will be around forever, uh, in terms of uh, shining a light on this, raising awareness about it. Um, I know you have a news conference you, you need to go to. Before we lose you, is, does anyone have a question? Go ahead. Uh, Larry, uh, a representative from, from Manchester, Representative Gagne, uh, is a Navy guy, I believe, right? Yes, I was. I was a skivvy waiver. Okay. So I identify with the radio man. Uh, back in that time period too we're, we're all old um, i'm looking at the picture of the ship here which is badly damaged i was a tin can sailor by the way uh, i'm looking for the american flag which is usually on the stern i don't see it is it there yeah it's, it's on the mast let's look on up on the, the mast it's I, on the lanyard mid mid mast or I, I, not, I, anyway, I don't see it, but that's, uh, in my opinion, it's still no excuse. Sir, if I All right. Read, it was shot down from the flag staff. Two flags were shot down. A third one was raised, a holiday flag from the signal halyard. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't see it, so I'll take your word for it, sir. We uh, always had a flag flying. Yeah, flag was flying as all we're the time. supposed to. Yes. Yeah. In fact, the Israelis identified us as American and friendly hours before. Then they took us off their war table and forgot we were there. So, if there's any other questions, I'm glad to take them. But uh... Representative Levitt, no one here is going to take away your First Amendment right. I will be the first one to vote for a subcommittee to investigate this, and I appreciate all of your passionate testimony because this is something that's been taken too long to have it and ultimately chair moffitt makes the decision but i'll be the first god bless you thank you uh mr will seeing no other hands 
we will uh, let you go. Uh, thank you for being here. I know it was a long trip. Thank you for your service. Uh, I know you have a news conference. We want to let you go, and that'll give you an opportunity to, to better elaborate to whoever's there uh, and take questions. And, uh, and here, of course, we have some constraints. Uh, the prime sponsor, uh, I want to go to him because I know you need to be with these gentlemen um, as they go downstairs. Uh, and I also have a number of cards. So before we get to the cards to, to finish this hearing, uh, Representative Gerhardt, if you would take a minute or two or whatever uh, just to tie things together before you step away. Thank you, members of the committee. I've, I've asked for a little more detailed explanation. Jason Gerhard, Northfield Franklin. I just wanted to address what happened immediately after the attack and the subsequent efforts to sink the Liberty, just briefly. Yes, we were sent, uh, when, when help finally got there 17 hours later, and they took the most seriously wounded off, um, which was most of the ship. We, they sent us to Malta, a thousand miles away with a 40 by 40 foot torpedo hole in it, hoping we'd sink on the way and all the evidence would be gone. Our only sin that day was staying alive to tell the truth. I'm 77 years old. I've, I've been, I'm the four-time president, and I've been doing this most of my life. It became a life's mission, and it was one of the best things I ever did in my life. I, I will say this. I have two sons that served. One, one served in, um, in Afghanistan, 10th Mountain, lost his eye. My other son, he's current Navy SEAL. He's still in. So, uh, with that being said, uh, and, and sir, your your answer to me and what you said to me means more than you'll ever know. God bless you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. The, the closer port was. Oh, the closer port was in uh, Crete. Much early to get there, so yeah. I just wanted to establish that for the record. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for your service, sir. I just, just to brush on two things from the packet that was passed around. The declaration of Ward Boston. There's some highlighted aspects in there. In June of 1967, I was assigned to senior legal counsel for the Navy's court of inquiry into the brutal attack on USS Liberty, which had occurred on June 8th. The late Admiral Isaac C. Kidd, president of the court, and I were given only one week to gather evidence. Just, I'm reading the highlighted parts, just go through this very fastly. It was our shared belief, this is on the bottom, based on the documentary evidence and testimony, we received firsthand that the Israeli attack was planned and deliberate and could not possibly have been an accident. Admiral Kidd and I both felt it necessary to travel to Israel to interview the Israelis who took part in the attack. Admiral Kidd later told me that Admiral McCain was adamant that we were not to travel to Israel or contact the Israelis concerning this matter. I know from personal conversations I had with Admiral Kidd that President Lyndon Johnson and Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara ordered him to conclude that the attack was a case of mistaken identity despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Admiral Kidd told me after returning from Washington, D.C. that he had been ordered to sit down with two civilians from either the White House or the Defense Department and rewrite portions of the court's findings. Admiral Kidd also told me that he had been ordered to quote unquote, put the lid on everything having to do with the attack on USS Liberty. We were never to speak of it, and we were to, to caution everyone else involved that they could never speak of it again. And the first page, we spoke briefly of Commander Lewis, who is from Colebrook, New Hampshire. So I just want to establish there is a very um, significant New Hampshire connection to this. Commander Lewis was in charge of, I believe, 194 men on board the ship out of 294, 204. So he, in his obituary, this is on the first page, second paragraph, well, third, technically, Eddie's career spanned more than 25 years. He retired at the rank of commander. 
And he was wounded aboard the USS Liberty in the Mediterranean Sea when the nation of Israel attacked the ship, claiming mistaken identification of the ship. For the rest of his life, Eddie bore the scars of that day, and he was deeply involved with the group of survivors, proving that the state of Israel and the Johnson administration deliberately staged the attack to try and draw the U.S. into the Israeli-Egyptian Six-Day War of 1967. In 2018, he was a central figure and collaborator in the book Blood in the Water, which chronicles this dark episode of American military history. So, in closing, I thank everyone for listening to this testimony. I really appreciate these men coming vast distances to testify and I hope that this committee will see the significance of this issue and bring it forward so we can get to the bottom of this situation that quite frankly is a scar on the legitimacy of congressional investigations in my opinion. Thank you. Questions for the prime sponsor. Uh, Representative Filio, Filio, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative. Um, and thank you, Representative, for bringing this issue to the committee. And thank you to our uh, witnesses today for not only traveling here, but now putting it onto the public record what happened. And I think for those of us who were not aware, bringing it to our attention as well. I want to preface this with, I think this is important to put onto the public record and begin to figure out what happened through an investigation. But I'm also aware of the limit of state power that we don't have an ability to subpoena the, the federal government. We wouldn't have the ability to subpoena federal records. So if we were to launch an investigation, it is very possible we could get stonewalled. But from what I perceive of the intent of the bill, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, which I guess is how I'm going to loop this into being a question in the end. Uh, well, ultimately, this is to try to kick the federal government into gear and say, this actually did occur. Start doing your jobs. Would you be amenable to perhaps changing this to an HR to put it on the record that the legislature of New Hampshire believes this happened, thinks it's important, as well as giving some form of state recognition to the survivors, more so than an investigation, which could ultimately be an investigation into nothing because we don't have a subpoena power or an extraterritorial investigation power? I would answer the la later, latter part of your question, no. I don't believe a House resolution would, would achieve what we need to happen, which is put onto the official record all of the documents, official documents, including that um, affidavit of Ward Boston in 2004. There are a lot of things have come to light after the supposed congressional investigation that need to be brought onto the record. So it's not so much a matter of subpoenaing and getting, pow and getting information that's not readily available, although the 200 so pages that are still classified would be helpful. And I believe that launching this at the state level and putting pressure on the federal government to release documents that are decades old would lead to more information coming out. So no on the House resolution, because that would just simply say, hey, we think this is important. But the investigation actually says, we're having people come and testify. I mean, there's more sailors that would, if we had a full on investigation, we'll be here to testify. And I think it's important to get these on the record, because otherwise all the platitudes that we give to our veterans really don't mean much. That's my personal opinion on that. Thank you for that explanation. Anything else for the prime sponsor? Yes. Uh, Representative Judy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, who is not you? Happy New Year. Hi. And uh, I would like to know if someone here knows about uh, the name of that prime minister at that time. Levi Yeshko was the prime minister of Israel at that time. Okay. Yes, okay. yes I'm yeah, I remember it was mentioned earlier, but I didn't remember the name, so. Other questions? Okay, Representative, thank you for that. Uh, thank you. I know you need to get downstairs. So here's what is going to happen at this time. We are running late, but this is uh, what we do. Um, I, I have a number of other cards, and I am going to, uh, and I know some of the folks who want to uh, testify, uh, also I, I encourage to get downstairs to to be with the survivors as they amplify their comments. So I'm going to ask that the folks who still want to stay here and testify uh, keep their comments to a minute or two, uh, and then they'll give you a chance to get downstairs. So, And that is something I can do as the chair, and uh, so we're going to kind of uh, be kind of tough on that. Keep it as succinct as possible, because we do need to finish this up, and we do want to give you a chance to get downstairs. Um, However, uh, Kathy Peterson, um, 
Is Kathy? Uh, Kathy, uh, I've got you at the top of the list. Uh, if you could take a minute or two, if you still want to, uh, and and before she starts. Uh, please understand we, we do take and encourage written testimony, email testimony, uh, portal testimony, which we can uh, evaluate and take up at exec session. So uh, please utilize those options as well. Uh, Kathy, welcome. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kathy Peterson, a New Hampshire native. I live in Nashua, um, as did my cousin that was on the USS Papago ship sent in to pick up these fine gentlemen, the 34 that were killed and the 174 that were severely wounded. Uh, it affected his whole life. It affected our family's life. He drank a lot. He finally stopped and found peace. But I've always known about it, and it'd be really great if somebody could do something about it, finally. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, John Graham, uh, that's if you'd like to pass that around, that would be that would be wonderful. James Makers, yes. A uh, representative, Honorable John Graham, a uh, representative of the American Legion, uh, representative. I mentioned one or two minutes. Uh, you're in opposition to the to the measure. No, I'm not. I am not in opposition to the bill as a whole. I think that um, any time we look at incidents such as this, is important. I just wish that the sponsors had bothered to reach out to the American Legion ahead of time to put our name down. We do not desire to participate in this commission. And so I would ask that it be amended to take us off. Our national organization has a position on, on this issue. And if you leave it on, <clears throat> there will not be a member appointed. So thank you very much. And in the interest of time, as you have said, it. So, well, Mr. Chairman, I will take no questions. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, uh, Honorable John Graham for the American Legion. Uh, and appreciate the uh, succinctness. Okay, uh, Derek Pro, Derek has been here before. Supports the bill. Thank you, Chairman Moffitt, members of the committee. My name is Derek Prue uh, from Derry, New Hampshire, uh, former Sergeant, New Hampshire Army National Guard. Um, I just want to speak as a veteran. There's many members on this committee who are veteran. Um, you know, we're brothers and sisters in arms. We're supposed to take care of each other. We're a family, and we owe it to our family to give them a proper investigation that they never had. We owe it to them. They've been searching for 57 years. And it's it's our job as brothers and sisters in arms to give it to them. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Does anyone have a hot question for Derek? If I meant to offer that courtesy, and I seeing no hands. Thank you again, Derek. Uh, Matt uh, Schwinier has uh, is in support of the bill. He submitted written testimony, which is great. Thank you for that, Matt. Uh, Paul Lloyd. Paul from the VFW was here earlier. Is Paul here? Okay, is there anyone else who uh, I've missed or their card has been lost in transit? Not seeing any. Uh, again, I'll remind everyone we, uh, I see a hand up. Yes, sir. Uh, step right up, uh, state your name and hometown and take a minute to two minutes. Hey, good evening, guys. My name is Matt Saborn, Dish One here. I'm not sure. I think I might have submitted two cards. I just wanted to testify in support of the bill. I'm honorably discharged veteran, a separated Air Force 03. I'm testifying today. I'm a resident of New Hampshire and Seabrook, and I would love to see our state pick up where the federal government left off. We owe transparency to the deceased and wounded survivors and their families and to the public as well. In the United States, we have a federalized system of government, and it's the accountability of the state, responsibility of the states to hold the federal government accountable. Federal government is not competent or even loyal enough to its sailors to determine the culpability of an act of war against them, and it's up to the states to fill that leadership void. Uh, although I'm not a member of uh, the current standing resolution by the Veterans of Foreign Wars, Resolution 423, to have the TAC investigated by Congress is still standing, but it has currently been ignored. Uh, the question needs to be asked is who does our government be accountable for? 
uh, the American servicemen of the USS Liberty who volunteered to risk their life for the family, friends, and neighbors, and the public at large deserve a responsible government that caters to Americans. As a New Hampshire resident, I would be thrilled if our state and donor, a net donor to the federal government, could respond to the legitimate requests of the USS Liberty Veterans Association and provide the crew with an impartial and complete investigation of the incident and its aftermath. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, and thank you for getting these gentlemen from point A to point B. Yes, and now point C is downstairs for the, uh, the, the little conference, and so we'll let you get to that. And seeing no other cards or hands at this time, we will uh, end that hearing. Uh, uh, sir?